Thank you, Nancy. Our scripture for this morning to support our sermon comes from the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28. I will be reading verses 16 through 20. The gospel according to Matthew. First 28 chapter, I'm sorry, 28 chapter, verses 16 through 20. And it reads, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's word. Our sermon title for today is Communion of the Heart. Communion of the Heart, charged to make disciples for Jesus. Communion of the Heart, charged to make disciples for Jesus. Come with me in prayer. Holy Spirit, please fall afresh upon me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, my rock and my redeemer. redeemer. And Lord, please, let me not give me, but let me lift up you. Please, Jesus, let this message fall on fertile ground which includes me. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Communion of the heart, charged, being charged to make disciples for Jesus. This text is about obedience, belief, trust, and willingness to carry on Jesus' work and remembering we are not alone when we choose to carry on Jesus' work. The text is about Jesus giving a charge to the disciples to carry on, to go forward, a charge, a duty, and responsibility to keep teaching, and witnessing about the good news of Jesus. That's about salvation. When we accept Christ as our Savior, we too are given that charge. How, you may say, verse 19, go therefore and make disciples. Now, um, before you say, well, Jesus gave that charge to special people, allow me to give some historical information on those folks he chose, the chosen ones, as you say. Their name, their occupation, and the characteristics of those men at the time 
they were chosen. Simon Peter. History says that he was a fisherman by occupation. His characteristic is defined was that he was impulsive. James, a fisherman, ambitious, short-tempered, judgmental. John, too, was a fisherman, ambitious, judgmental. Andrew, fisherman, eager to bring others to Jesus. Philip, fisherman, his character trait, he had a questioning attitude. Bartholomew, his occupation was unknown, but he was honest and straightforward, history tells us, as he was also known as Nathaniel. He is the one that initially rejected Jesus because he, Jesus, came from Nazareth. And Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Matthew, a tax collector, you know how we feel about that. Despised because of his dishonest career. Now, I'm not saying to all tax collectors are dishonest now. I'm just saying what history tells us about Matthew, one of the 12 that Jesus chose. Thomas, his occupation is unknown. But Thomas had courage, and then he was also a doubter. He wanted things to be proven to him. He was the one that says, okay, Jesus, if this is you, let me touch where you were pierced. Thomas, unknown as I said, Courage and doubt. James, unknown his occupation, unknown his characteristic. Thaddeus, unknown again, unknown. Simon the Zealot, unknown. But history says he was very patriotic, fierce with his patriotism. Ju Judas Iscariot, his occupation is unknown. But we are told that he was treacherous and greedy. He was the one that held on to the money and also betrayed Jesus. Why have I given you these tidbits about the disciples? Because they were regular people, regular people like us. Jesus had resurrected and was given the 11, the charge. Judas was now out of the picture because of his betrayal of Jesus. And at this point with the text, Jesus was about to leave the disciples to go back to heaven, but the charge was given. The text says, the eleven went to the mountain as directed by Jesus. That was obedience. The text says some still doubt it. Like we still do today. But still in all, with these imperfect people, Jesus still gave them the charge. That's truly communion of the heart. One, obedience. Two, accepting Jesus' charge. But many of us today don't accept the charge. We had a darkened mind before we sought Jesus wholeheartedly. Jesus chose to to pour his light into us so that we can be a beacon of light to others. We don't just accept Jesus. 
and hold it for ourselves. But many of us, many of us either don't accept the duty or responsibility of the, or the charge that being witnessing to make disciples or we allow hardships in our lives to hinder us. How can we witness telling others what Jesus means to you? How can we witness by telling how Jesus has delivered you from problems and if not delivered yet, how Jesus helps you each day to just make it through and as you make it through, the possibility of the next day being better is there. Oh, yes. But we don't take and maintain the charge. Why? Because of life. So let me see if I can tie this together for you. January the 3rd, 2020, Nelson Ross and I was coming from Durham, North Carolina, Christmas vacation. Didn't get in that Friday until 10.30 that night. Traffic, everything. And at 3.30 a.m., I received a call that my brother, in Los Angeles had died. Eight months and three days after my sister. At 10 a.m. the next day, that Saturday, I had to go and see a beloved congregant at Berkshire Medical Center because on our way home from Durham to home here in Pittsfield, the congregant and family requested that I come to the hospital to make a visit. 10 a.m. the next day, which was Sunday, I did 10 a.m. worship, and then the 2 p.m. home-going funeral services for another beloved congregant that had been planned before we took Christmas vacation. 7 p.m. the following Friday, I was called to the hospital because Another beloved congregant, that same congregant that I had seen the Saturday before, had died. Which was that same Saturday that I, after that I had come home from Durham and at 3.30 a.m. informed that my brother had died. After all of this, I just said, God, let me get to vacation time. I will be able to regroup and heal, grieve, and do all that I need to do so that I can live up to the charge you have given me. Then came COVID-19. No vacation in May. Nowhere in this text does it say, go and make disciples when things are going well in your life. But it does say, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. I wish 
I would have told you all back in January how much I was hurting. How some days I didn't have the energy. I missed out on a chance to witness because if I had witnessed about the pain and the hurt, prayers would have been coming in. And maybe other disciples would have said, She's going to make it because of the trust in God that she has and because of our prayers going up, going up. This is significant. Why? Because there is communion of the heart coming in. When Jesus is in your heart, yes, fellowshipping together to partake in the Lord's Supper, communion is critical, and it's being missed now. But having Jesus in our hearts consoles us and consoles us through others. We don't have to always be together. We have been taught this. But the communion of the heart allows us to share witness of God's healing and God's power. The disciples may have thought, you're leaving us. You're leaving us, Jesus, and you're telling us to go and make disciples. We can't do it. We can't do this. Some of us are still doubting. Some of us haven't learned everything we should have learned from you. Because of our heart and hearts. Because we couldn't believe that you didn't come down as the king we had expected to overturn the government so that we can stop being hurt. Yet Jesus still believed in them and told them to go. You see, when we allow our lives to be a witness to others on behalf of Jesus, we then always fulfill the charge to make disciples on behalf of Jesus. Because it is no secret what God can do. What God does for others, God will also do. For you, with God's arms wide open, the Holy One will pardon you. Because it is no secret what God can and what God will do when you decide to follow Jesus. To witness on behalf of Jesus. To allow Jesus to use you. So go. Go. No matter what you are going through. Witness through the pain. Take Jesus' charge. Witness through the doubt. Take Jesus' charge. Witness through health crisis. Take Jesus' charge. Witness through the death of a loved one. Take Jesus is charge. Witness through financial crisis. Take Jesus is charge. Witness through loneliness. Take Jesus is charge. Witness through COVID-19. Take Jesus is charge. And watch how people are baptized in the name of the Creator, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. They may not get baptized in that baptistry, but they'll get baptized in their faith, baptized in their belief. Hearts will be changed. And with those hearts being changed, daily communion with Jesus in remembrance of him will take place. All you have to do is allow the Holy One to take you, mold you, 
use you. And watch how he fills you to continue the charge of making disciples. Just go into the potter's hand, willingly, willingly choose to be his vessel. Choose. Maintain being his vessel in spite of and watch how this world will change. Amen. Amen. Watch how this world will be changed. Be an example. Model for others. It's not about you but it's all about Jesus' power.